So two years after starting yoga and stretching on an almost daily basis, I fell victim to one of the most common risks of stretching, yet I'd never even heard of it. In hindsight, it is baffling how something that is experienced by so many people had not made it onto my radar. I am an absolute knowledge nerd at heart. When I get into something and really enjoy it, I want to know it all. And I love to do my research and really educate myself. So why had this slipped through my net? And my inspiration for making this video is to hopefully reach the me of six years ago. Maybe that's you. The me that was so enjoying yoga or working on my flexibility flexibility, but had no idea of the injury that was just waiting to happen, which one morning in a 6am yoga class ended up changing my perceptions of stretching forever. I got into yoga at age 27. I fell in love with the way it made me feel. And as a not very flexible person, I was surprised with how quickly I could see changes in my flexibility. And it was such a motivating factor, which was a really big deal for me. Up until this point, I'd been relatively active my whole life, dabbling with a bit of running, a bit of weightlifting at the gym, but it was always something that I had to do. It was a chore. I've struggled with body image and body dysmorphia since I was a teenager and exercise had always been a way to change my body to try and improve it, to try and help me accept myself. But yoga hit different. I found something which I love for how it made me feel about myself. And it was the highlight of my day to step on my mat and stretch my body and try to learn some funky balancing move. I could not touch my toes when I started. I was so stiff. Getting the splits was soon on my goals list as something that I'd love to achieve. The first thing that you learn in yoga tends to be a sun salute. You reach up. You fold over, you fold a little less. You move through your yogi push-up, take an up dog, take a down dog, return to your fold, rise and repeat. But why am I telling you this? Because did you know that you stretch your hamstrings five times during one traditional sun salutation and strengthen them only once? The primary series of Ashtanga Yoga is a bunch of postures which even those who don't do yoga or don't really stretch are quite likely familiar with. A standing forward fold, wide leg fold, triangle, pyramid, and a whole bunch of seated folds too. Hamstrings, hamstrings, hamstrings. So spoiler alert, the hidden risk of stretching that nobody talks about, it's a hamstring injury. And before I get into the fateful day of how it happened to me, and more importantly, how to go about avoiding it yourself, let me introduce you to the phrase yoga butt. Yoga butt is the casual term for the injury that is more officially called proximal hamstring tendinopathy. Proximal meaning it happens at the top, hamstring referring to the muscle that it affects, and tendinopathy. Tendon refers to tendons, which is the soft tissue that connects your muscles to your bones, and opathy means a disorder of. Essentially, something's wrong with it. Its cute little nickname comes from the not so cute concept that those who practice yoga get this a lot. But really, it's a stretching injury. So I got yoga butt at a yoga festival. It was in the UK, i.e. it was very cold. It was an outdoor class and it was 6 a.m., which is my way of highlighting that my body was stiff, particularly after spending the night in a tent. The yoga teacher instructs Hanyamanasana, which is the yoga name for front splits. So off I go. I slide the front heel forwards, slide the back foot back, and see how low I can press my hips down towards the floor. Because that's how you do it, right? No, clunk is the word I use to describe both the feeling and the sound that resonated from just underneath my leg. Funnily enough, it wasn't a sharp pain. It wasn't something that immediately made me roll around the floor in pain, far from it. It just felt kind of horrid, unpleasant, and just not good. That was the day that I got yoga butt. I had stretched and stretched and stretched my hamstrings multiple times a week for months. And every time a muscle stretches, it pulls against the point where it attaches to the bone at the tendon. Tension is created there. And just like an old elastic rubber band, eventually it can simply no longer maintain its integrity. 
micro tears appear. And that's exactly what yoga butt is. Damage micro tears to the top part of the hamstring, right where it inserts onto your sit bones. That bony bit that's right underneath your bum. But wait, the last thing I want to do here is discourage anyone from stretching or scare you away from yoga. Let me explain why this happens and how simple the solution is to avoid it. Our muscles need more than just stretching. It's a pretty dangerous misconception that a tight muscle only needs more flexibility because tight does not mean strong. Many of our muscles are both tight and weak from the lifestyles that we live these days. My hamstring was stretched within an inch of its life through daily yoga, daily stretching, but a traditional yoga practice has very little hamstring strengthening within it especially building strength in the lengthened position. And if you don't have any other forms of exercise outside of yoga, which I didn't at the time, and I know many other people around the world don't, then the chances are that your hamstrings are overstretched and understrengthened. My inbox on social media is unfortunately littered with people who are wanting to figure out what this niggling pain is that they have just underneath their bum. Coincidentally, they also tend to be people who are working on their flexibility through yoga particularly aiming towards the splits. Why isn't this talked about more? So how can you avoid yoga butt? Strength in a muscle gives it resilience, gives it the ability to withstand the stress and tension it is put under during a stretch and actually allows the muscle to stretch further. Strength building is a crucial part of improving flexibility and it's arguably the same thing, but that's a depth of conversation I'll have to save for another time. For today, I would love to give you some ideas of how best to train your hamstrings in a balanced way, and also let you know the worst thing that you can do if you have yoga butt, learn from my own disastrous mistakes. Here's two concepts for you to consider. Firstly, get strong with movements outside of yoga. RDLs, hamstring curls, Nordics if you're feeling brave. If you already have a weightlifting routine that includes hamstring strengthening, good news. The risk of yoga butt doesn't really apply to you. You may pass go and you may collect 200 pounds. But if weightlifting isn't your jam, which it doesn't have to be, add more hamstring strengthening into your yoga practice. Take bridge with your heels further away from you. Take locust in your vinyasa instead of an up dog. Rise to an actual halfway with your halfway lifts and don't have your hands down, which would remove the strengthening component. All I would urge you to do is to have a balanced approach to how you treat all of your muscles, not just your hamstrings. It's why I love mobility exercises. You get two for one, strength and flexibility in one go. And as for my yoga butt, Sad news is it took nearly two years to fully heal, largely down to the fact that I didn't know what it was initially and I never sought any help. I just continued to stretch, thinking it was a persistent tightness in my hamstring. In hindsight, possibly the worst thing I could have done to the poor thing. If you think that you might have yoga butt, I'm really very sorry to hear that, but do check in with a physio. They're likely going to tell you to do some sort of hamstring strengthening exercises and to cut out the stretches for a while. I get it. Most of us want more flexible hamstrings. They're notoriously tight in many, many people. So I've made this video to give you an incredibly effective mobility-based method to use when stretching your hamstrings with no yoga butt in sight. 